My, my. You look like a small, injured animal. Are you still willing to talk to me? Of course, I'm still willing to be your psychotherapist. I admit I made a transaction with that gentleman to bring you before him, but this is also a safe place. He needs you. It's essential if we want to reclaim Panacone, recognizing his immense potential and the invaluable memories he can help me gather. I opted to join forces with him. In Panacone, everyone may be lying. And yes, that includes me. I can't deny this, nor do I seek forgiveness. But do you still remember? I said, I have faith in your potential. And that's not a lie. The Garden of Recollection wants to witness the future of the Astral Express trailblazing the cosmos. And as for these memories, I will treasure them. I do not have reasons to hurt any of you. Instead, I will continue to assist you. <laughs> Provided you are willing to accept my assistance. My take on this might surprise you. In my view, he's a trustworthy individual, not for any other reason but because he's an exceptional businessman. In this vast universe, no one values honesty and contracts more than a merchant. But always be on guard, particularly when making agreements with him. Scrutinize the details. Beyond the confines of the contract, your rights are off his radar. He'll go to extreme lengths to ensure his advantage. I still believe that Miss Firefly's situation is deeply connected with the Stellaron Hunter, just as we speculated. But, as you've heard, Aventurine has his finger pointed at the Galaxy Ranger. I can't fathom why he'd draw that conclusion, but given his access to the IPC's intelligence network, we should seriously consider his perspective. Moreover, I believe Miss Acheron is also hiding something. No. In fact, I should say she's hiding everything from us. It was an unexpected finding from an earlier encounter. With regards to the Annihilation Gang, I can also prove that what Aventurine said was the truth. That's why, during this golden soiree, she is the dance's centerpiece. Why, of course. But now is not the time. I know you're confused. And... sad. Whoever that girl might have been. A living soul. A memory that was meant to last. She simply vanished. Like the dissolution of bubbles in water, disappearing in an instant. No matter what, I hope you can trust Aventurine. Or rather, trust me and see the truth with your own eyes. This can lead us deeper into the secrets behind Benaconi. I will protect you. Once I gather more information from him, I'll make sure you're safely returned to your companions. For the truth, and to prevent more unnecessary sacrifices, it is the right choice. Perhaps he plans on doing so, but I won't. The Garden of Recollection has eyes everywhere. If he wants to hurt you, he'll have to fight against the Memo Keepers. I've warned him about that. Later, I'll stay by your side as a memetic entity, just in case. Time to set off. Go and meet Aventurine? 
Or I could still choose not to help. Excellent. I knew you would come. By the way, about that memo keeper... <sighs> Never mind. I won't press the issue further. I've said before you can liaise with your companions, or even twist the narrative against me. I'll wholeheartedly embrace it. It signifies your potential. I don't do deals where I'm on the losing end. So, my friend... Friends, don't let me down. Please, this way, if you will. Oh, right. I remember mentioning something after that. What was it again? <laughs> a familiar hallway, a familiar room. Do you remember? Last time we met was right here. This is it. Just beyond this door. Take a deep breath and get ready. Oh, I remember. My friend. After that, we played an enjoyable game. Tell me, doesn't this feel eerily familiar? I remember everything now. This was what I told you at that time. Look, friend. The game has already begun. Allow me to make you an offer. One you can't refuse. No reason to choose otherwise. And no. Other choices. I'm back. 
Welcome back. How is your preparation for the performance coming? It's fine. Don't worry. It's fine? <laughs> no, no, this is not good. You're the pride of the family. Don't let those unnecessary emotions affect your perfect pitch. I... no. Brother, you seem to be in low spirit. What's happened? Is it because of the Watchmaker's guest list? Yes. I received the report that... death had taken some of them. Perhaps someone was behind it. I'm sorry, I... Forgot you just came back. You probably wouldn't know about it. Somehow, a nightmare called Death has descended upon Panacone, striking indiscriminately, bringing spiritual death to all equally. In the utopian dreamscape envisioned by the family, such sorrowful incidents shouldn't arise. It profoundly undermines the equilibrium and serenity of the dreamscape, how detestable. I can't believe this has happened. Was someone killed again? Yes. There were two. One was a stowaway. Uh, the other... was you. That's enough, fool. Your deeds have saddened me. Pretty sharp, aren't you? Chicken wing boy. The Odes of Harmony talks about honesty. The words of a fool begins with foolishness and end in treacherous arrogance. Please leave. Their dreamscape doesn't welcome you. Oh, come on, lighten up. Why so serious with all the quotations and references? I'm just curious. Now things have come to this. Is the family still unwilling to fight? I mean, your darling sister's already a goner, right? Really? <laughs> Don't tell me you're not craving a little vengeance. It's not yet time. When the fated day arrives, I shall mete out justice with unyielding righteousness. Wow, you can endure that much? <gasps> Truly a heart of ice you've got there. Hey, maybe we could actually get along. How about this? I'll stand in for your dear sister at events. <laughs> Surely you don't want the world to hear the Charmony Festival's been called off. The family has a plan. And do not dishonor my dear sister with your deceitful tongue again, fool. All right, all right. Just putting it out there. If you're ever in a pinch, remember, I've got your back. I mean, who could resist a guy rocking spikes on his wings? <laughs> There's no need. The Malefactor has been exposed under their radiant gaze, and will soon fall by their own machinations. Should the transgressor fail to turn away from this path, their sword will be honed, their bow strung, causing the malevolence the perpetrator spreads to befall them. And when that time comes, the heathen will realize they are but a mere mortal, doomed to descend into the netherworld. And I... <sighs> I will join their vanguard to announce this good news to you personally. Watchmaker.
It's getting late. Where to now? from the Astral Express. <laughs> Welcome to the Dreamscape Sad Store. Oh, please excuse me. I struggle to think of an appropriate way of addressing such esteemed guests as yourselves. I've already made the necessary preparations. Be careful. We did pass the safety inspection stipulated by Article 027 that Ferris and Article 076 released. However, this dreamscape will feature unfiltered and unpolished fresh memory. You'll make for a very vivid experience. Veteran game. Call this type of dream a thrill dream. I'll go very into that kind. If you feel any discomfort, please leave the dreams there immediately and seek professional medical help. Luckily, I just so happen to be an excellent doctor. I'll be at a psychiatric one. <laughs> Let us begin. Please, close your eyes and rest your forehead on the dream. Oh, yes. That elegant girl mentioned something before she left. The nature of this memory is special. Don't ruin the dreamscape experience for anyone else by spoiling the ending. In my estimation, there is no question about it. This is murder. Murder. Such a foreign word to us. The people of Penacone could never come to any harm while under the watchful protection of the family. In a dream, even if you're bashed a thousand times with a hammer, at worst you'll still wake up in reality in a hotel. 
Not necessarily. Even if the result does not constitute harm, the criminal intent is clear enough. You specifically came here to cordon off the scene because of the unsavory nature of this case, right? You're not wrong. Even if there are no casualties, being smashed over the head with a hammer in the middle of the street for no reason at all? This is not the kind of thing that happens on Pentaconi. You are guests at the Oak family, so you may investigate the crime scene. I'll be on standby over here. Are you a witch? Just how did you manage to convince them in the blink of an eye that we're some kind of detectives? Just some suggestions at the memory level. If something happens in everybody's memory, then that something becomes a fact. If we had a little more time, I could have even convinced her I was Shipe the Harmony. Then, on to the next order of business. Let's discuss your companion, shall we? Memo Keeper of the Garden of Recollection. I've been watching you for quite some time. You stole a glance at me when you first entered the hotel. You followed me wherever I went inside the dreamscape. In the windows along the commercial street. In the pond water reflections of the Idean Park. Even in the reflections of the wine glass. Everywhere. Have a crush on me. Well then, seeing as you're so interested in me, let's play a little game. I left a puzzle for you near OT Mall. Solve it and prove that you're capable of pleasing me. If you can solve it, then we can talk. Don't leave me waiting, my dear. Before Penacone gets flipped upside down, try to find me, catch me, and stop me. There's actually more than one memo keeper who's come to Penacone. She's mixed me up with someone else. But no harm, no foul. The address that the mask gave you is right here. But you never would have thought. That when Miss Sparkle mentioned a game, she was talking about wanton slaughter on the streets of Penacone. Such a direct act of provocation is enough to get my competitive side worked up, too. Madam, forgive me. I had no idea about anything she said. As you saw, I went through a brain scan and everything. I'm just a friend, helping her deliver a letter, that's all. I never knew this was actually a declaration of warfare. They say you shouldn't kill the messenger. So, maybe you can just, you know... Let me go. You all are the big shots here. I'm really not on your level. <laughs> what a frightened look you have. Don't worry. Since this has nothing to do with you, I won't be suspecting you of anything. Why don't you come take a stroll with me? Oh, seems like I can't escape being an assistant detective. Oh, fine. It's all fine. No big deal. Anything you'd like to know, please ask away. Who was the victim? An IPC employee named Shamari. 
Eyewitnesses reported that a tall, strong man wearing a large rope with long sleeves walked right past Shamari and suddenly assaulted him with a hammer. Shamari collapsed on the spot and woke up from the dream. The murderer vanished in a flash. Ooh, that sounds just like Sparkle. Her best asset is transforming her appearance to look like someone else. Who are those two little guys? Seems like the assailants stole the troop from elsewhere and deliberately placed them here. What nerve. They don't even have the slightest consideration for public order. Those two have clammed up. I wonder if you two could help pry open their mouths. Looks like a puzzle that Sparkle has left behind for you. Any leads yet? This is a developing case, so there aren't many clues yet. All we have to go by are the weapon used by the assailant and the victim's ID. They didn't even take the weapon with them. Sounds like they're trying to provoke us. Despicable. Where is Mr. Shamari right now? I'd like to meet him. I'm afraid you can't. The Oaks came forward and calmed him down. Mr. Shamari expressed that he understands the unpredictable nature of dreams, and went on to vacation in another dreamscape. Best not to bother him. Guest experiences always have to come first. Oh, I'm afraid by the time we find him, half of Penicone will have been sent back to reality by Sparkle. Looks like we'll have to play this little game of Sparkles then. Lady Black Swan, you're here! I'm the constable, and this here assisting me is the bailiff for this case. Mr. Coldfeet, why'd you do it? So they can talk after all. Miss Black Swan, they're heading straight for you. Don't interrupt, I wasn't talking to you. <clears throat> I understand Lady Black Swan has quite the intellect. I'm sure you'll be able to get to the bottom of the Sparkle Murder Case. The Sparkle Murder Case? Wasn't the victim Shamari from the IPC? Wrong, Lady Black Swan. The victim is evidently none other than the matriarch of the Goldhammer family, Miss Sparkle Goldhammer. Oh, I guess Miss Sparkle has written herself into the skit here, and this has nothing to do with the actual case. Goldhammer? Is that her real surname? Never heard of it. Sounds made up. Sparkle doesn't sound like a real name either. Miss Sparkle was supposed to receive three valiant warriors at the Goldhammer residence today, but upon their arrival, all they found was her body. Miss Sparkle had been smashed over the head by a hammer and died on the spot. Such a brutal act of violence. My investigations discovered that the three warriors were supposed to escort supplies back to their territory the day before but they were unexpectedly ambushed by the Annihilation Gang. They narrowly escaped and barely got away with their lives, finding their supplies almost completely raided. So they all shared a motive for killing Miss Sparkle. To escape punishment! So the three of them teamed up to kill her. <gasps> Is the case closed? No, there can only be one murderer! Unsolved mystery if there were three murderers. Hang on, wait. Hmm. <sighs> if you can't justify it, don't bother. Got it. Those three were all vying against each other to be number two. They couldn't have cooperated on anything. So it must have been one of them acting alone. That actually doesn't make much sense. 
even if they were on bad terms, those three... Please begin your investigation, Lady Black Swan. There are lots of clues at the crime scene that are sure to help you apprehend the real culprit. I've got the case file right here. If you want to learn more about the suspects, talk to me. Lady Black Swan, allow me to introduce the three suspects to you. Lefton, Zhongshan, and Wright. Lefton is one of Miss Sparkle's chief lieutenants, whose right hand was unfortunately severed while he was valiantly fighting off the Annihilation Gang. He's now learning how to write and hold a fork with his left hand. How tough that must be! Then there's Zhongshan. This guy's a coward who ran away as soon as a group spotted some bandits along the road. He ended up smashing into the side of a cliff and getting his face disfigured. It's a real shame, as he used to be one of the rare handsome men left around town. Last of all comes Wright. This guy was so insatiably greedy that he still came back to try and embezzle the rest of the supplies after they narrowly escaped with their lives, lying about how the gang had taken off with everything. Lefton and Zhongshan were so incensed that they broke his legs. Hang on, I'm confused here. Left on? Right? Is this some kind of joke? What? Where did you get that idea from? Do you need me to go over it all again? Got it. But it sounds like Mr. Assistant Detective has his own misgivings. Would you like to go over it again? Lefton is one of Miss Sparkle's chief lieutenants, whose right hand was unfortunately severed while he was valiantly fighting off the Annihilation Gang. He's now learning how to write and hold a fork with his left hand. How tough that must be! Then there's Zhongshan. This guy's a coward who ran away as soon as a group spotted some bandits along the road. He ended up smashing into the side of a cliff and getting his face disfigured. It's a real shame, as he used to be one of the rare handsome men left around town. Last of all comes Wright. This guy was so insatiably greedy that he still came back to try and embezzle the rest of the supplies after they narrowly escaped with their lives, lying about how the gang had taken off with everything. Lefton and Zhongshan were so incensed that they broke his legs. That's all the intel we have on the three suspects. Super heavy! Ah, this must be the murder weapon for the Sparkle murder case! Miss Sparkle also used it to attack Mr. Shamari. I'm barely able to lift this using both hands! I have no idea how Sparkle could ever use this to hit a target! An ID card. Uh, Talent Motivation Department, Shamari. Is this the victim's? Mr. Shamari's belongings should have disappeared alongside him as he woke from the dreamscape. The fact that this ID is here means Miss Sparkle placed it here on purpose to prove that she definitely attacked someone. How are we meant to solve this with so little to go on? <clears throat> oh, you scared me! When did you pop out? The two pieces of evidence that you found are related to the attack on Shamari. Miss Sparkle didn't leave them lying around for no reason. They're clues to the puzzle. But... 
There are still some other clues that were placed in other areas, so they won't spoil the crime scene. Isn't that a bit unnecessary? No, no. It's disruptive to have a stack of irrelevant things crowding a crime scene. Miss Sparkle is a law-abiding citizen who'd never bring extra trouble to the family. Seems quite nice of her, if you ask me. Looks like Miss Sparkle is adding a little spice to the investigation. Let's take her up on her offer then. Mr. Assistant Detective, this way. little device here for could you please let me know it looks like a little button don't push it lady blackswan or whatever you do don't push it that's the mutually assured destruction button that miss sparkle installed once pushed miss sparkle and the entirety of pinacroni will instantaneously go up in smoke miss sparkle also has her own button the second she pushes hit you and the entirety of Pinacone will instantaneously go up and smoke! That sounds like... both buttons can do the exact same thing. Correct! Exactly the same. Uh... Oh. Aren't you going to ask me why? Okay. Why? This is nuts!
What's this? A plush toy? Regardless of why it's designed to look like the conductor aboard the Astral Express, this doll, is it connected to the case? Have you ever heard of something called a red herring in detective stories? It's a fake clue that leads you down the wrong path. I see. But when it's so obvious, doesn't that defeat the purpose? But that's just in case you didn't realize the ingenuity of Miss Sparkle and were worried about her throwing out a random useless clue. <laughs> I see. Thank you for your keen insight. Then, let's pretend we were misled by a red herring. Hmm. This doll. Could it be connected to the case? Uh, you don't have to play along that hard, you know. Seems like a hint for us from Miss Sparkle. That sounded like a story from ancient times. And why did the facial recognition system suddenly go out? This is so her style, isn't it? Doesn't look like there are any more clues. Let's head back to the crime scene. Next, should we pin down the identity of the perpetrator? This evidence, I've been staring at it all day, but there's nothing that can identify the perp. Lefton, that guy lost his hand. Remember Zhang Shan's face was disfigured after the incident at the cliff, right? I remember this one best. Wright has a broken leg. Why don't we flip the question and start by asking who couldn't be the murderer? After all, there are only three suspects, so elimination could be a valid method. If you put it like that, then do you already have someone in mind? Tell me, come on. Who exactly is the murderer? Remember Zhang Shan's face was disfigured after the incident at the cliff? Right? Oh, is that so? I feel like the evidence doesn't really match. How about you think it over again? Oh, is that so? Poor guy. He was seriously injured and was all wrapped up in bandages to keep his good looks safe. If that's the case, then he couldn't have made it through the Goldhammer Residence's facial recognition system. That would suggest that Zhongshan is not the murderer. So, who exactly is the murderer? I remember this one best. Wright has a broken leg.
Oh, is that so? I feel like the evidence doesn't really match. How about you think it over again? Oh, is that so? 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 I feel like the end. Oh, is that so? I feel like the evidence doesn't. Oh, is that so? Oh, is that so? Oh, is that so? I feel like the evidence do Oh, is that so? I feel like... So, who exactly is the murderer? Lefton, that guy lost his hand. Based on the bailiff's statement, Lefton's dominant hand was seriously injured to the point where he had to learn how to live using only his left hand. Swinging that giant sledgehammer to murder someone, that must be hard for him. Probably impossible. Lefton's suspicion level can be downgraded. By process of elimination, it seems that only Wright could be the murderer. That was easy. Let's tell the constable our answer and see what he thinks. Please begin your investigation, Lady Black Swan. There are lots of clues at the crime scene that are sure to help you apprehend the real culprit. The murderer is right. The next puzzle? I didn't sign up for this. Looks like the key to winning lies not in the puzzle itself, but in the motives behind Miss Sparkle's strange behavior. I'm afraid this chase may just go on forever. I have to remind you that Sparkle is a masked fool? Do you plan on finding logic in the mind of a masked fool? That's exactly what I plan on doing. Even if it's just subjective, there must be an overall principle behind the behavior. Memories cannot lie, and hers may just understand more about her than she does herself. Right now, let's follow her train of thought and head to the next puzzle. I hope this time we can get ahead of the Bloodhound family. I want to try and avoid using my Memo Keeper powers. So why are you so focused on Sparkle's challenge? Or should I ask, are you more focused on Sparkle herself? I told you, it's purely out of a spirit of competitiveness. And, as a Memo Keeper, I also have to fulfill my responsibilities and harvest some interesting memories. Enjoy Clocky's Pink 
Whoa, this place is a complete mess. And those two weirdos are probably here too. There's nobody else at the scene. Seems like Miss Sparkle used the same method to send dreamers back to reality. Let's talk to those two there then. like that. Is this some sort of artistic performance that young people are into these days? Is there something wrong with the way we are talking? Deputy Sheriff, am I talking in a strange way? Oh, of course not, Sheriff. The way you talk is no stranger than the cat that climbs the apple tree in my grandma's backyard. Huh. The skit this time is a modernist one. Let's discuss this difficult case, then. The victim is a galactic business magnate named Sparkle. Her again? Sparkle really is obsessed with scripting her own death. Oh, for the laughter. If you undercut me one more time, I swear I'm gonna kick you in the butt! <clears throat> Miss Sparkle came to the fashion store to buy herself a brand new tie. She didn't come back out. After a long time, the shopkeeper went in to see what was going on, but instead discovered Miss Sparkle's body. She had been strangled to death. There were three suspects on the scene, namely a Papeshi shopkeeper named Wright, a Foxy and Gambler named Zhang Shan, and a wealthy Intellitron trader called Lefton. Our old friends. It's not just to aid your memory. We've added more descriptions to help tell them apart. Miss Sparkle is so gracious. Based on surveillance footage, witness testimony, and various pieces of evidence, the killer is ultimately among these three, and they were not working in cahoots. You're too lazy to be a suspect, right? Oh, for the laughter! If I talk any more with you, it'll make my pure soul filthy! Detective Black Swan, the dossiers are over here! You can learn more about the suspects from me. I trust you'll be able to cut through the hogwash and find out who Miss Sparkle's killer is! Let me introduce the identities of these suspects to you. It's very straightforward. First of all, is the shopkeeper right? He's one of the Papashi people, and only stands as tall as Sparkle's waist, which is often a source of teasing for him. He can get pretty salty about it. Next up, you have the merchant Lefton. He wants to join up with the Panacone Trading Guild, and is in direct competition with Miss Sparkle. That could be a motive for killing her. Finally, there is the gambler, Zhang Shan. He lost a bet to Miss Sparkle, and he had to hand over his family heirloom. It's possible he harbored a grudge against her. That's all the information we have. Do you need me to repeat it? Sorry to interrupt your dreamscape experience, Madam Trailblazer. That segment doesn't seem to be in this dream bubble. But don't worry. I'll replay the records for you. First of all, is the shopkeeper right? He's one of the Papashi people and only stands as tall as Sparkle's waist, which is often a source of teasing for him. He can get pretty salty about it. Next up, you have the merchant Lefton. He wants to join up with the Panacone Trading Guild and is in direct competition with Miss Sparkle. That could be a motive for killing her. Finally, there is the gambler, Zhang Shan. He lost a bet to Miss Sparkle, and he had to hand over his family heirloom. It's possible he harbored a grudge against her. Harmonize. Serenade the glow. Get your tickets for 
And there's the tie. That skit before said that the deceased was strangled. Is this tie some kind of joke murder weapon? The tag on the tie reads, only for Imperial Master Lefton. Seems like it's one of Miss Sparkle's personal belongings. That's not how you use the word Imperial. There's an accounting book lying on the ground. It must have been specially placed there by Sparkle. On the title page is written, Chen Katong. Is that someone's name? <gasps> A code name! Oh, I think it's the name of the owner of this book! This Chen Katong person should be Sparkle's targeted victim this time around. So, it's just like the first case then. Only two pieces of evidence. The rest, hidden inside her memories again, right? Miss Sparkle doesn't want to distract your investigation. She doesn't want to distract our investigation? What a law-abiding citizen this Sparkle is. Why doesn't she surrender then? Become part 
Ah, <laughs> 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 